Greetings, Honors Pre-Calculus class. This is Mr. Earth, and I thought I would show you what we're going to be doing this week with parametric equations. Um, now, this isn't actually quite your project. Uh, this is sort of the preliminary practice project we're going to do together as a class, and I thought I'd show you what it's going to look like in the end. So, um, so now as I've got this GeoGebra thing here built, and in the end you're going to build all this kind of stuff yourself, but I got a little checkbox here that's going to put on the sun. So, boom, there's the sun. And what we, our end goal is to actually look at the orbit of a moon. So, um, the moon actually doesn't go around the sun. It goes around a planet, and the planet goes around the sun. So, let me put the planet on first. And in this particular example, um, and this is actually built to scale, so this planet is 150,000 kilometers away from the sun. And it has a orbit in which it takes it 70 days to go around the sun. So pretty fast. But I have a little tracker here for days. Don't worry about this distance thing here yet, because that's tracking the distance of the moon to the sun. The distance of the planet to the sun is going to stay constant. And I just have a little button here, or sorry, a checkbox here that says motion. And when you click it, you can see the days going by. And there's our alien planet going around the sun. And as long as we keep that checked, it's just going to keep spinning around and around and around. So, um, all right, I'm going to stop the motion. I think you get the idea. Actually, before I stop the motion, I'll also show you that I have a little checkbox here to show the planet's orbit. So, here you go. You see it's making a circle. Now, just so you know, in reality, planets don't actually go around in circles. They go around in ellipses. Uh, but in most cases, the ellipse is like indistinguishable from a circle to the naked eye. So it's, it's almost circular, uh, except in very extreme cases. So, um, all right, there's our, uh, circle of radius 150,000 kilometers. All right, let me, uh, pause the motion here by clicking that. And I'm gonna click a reset button here, which sets it back to zero. And I like to start right here at the east pole, and it kind of goes around like that. Okay, well, let's put the moon on. So I'll click the show moon button. So there's the moon, and it turns out the way over, and again, this is uh, done to scale, so uh, the moon's radius from the planet is 100,000 kilometers. Um, that's considerably closer than our actual moon, by the way. Our, our actual moon, I think, is like 400,000 kilometers, and obviously our planet is nowhere near this close to the sun. Uh, it's like in the millions. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's definitely not 150,000 kilometers. Um, but it turns out you get a cooler picture when these two... Uh, radii are closer to each other. So that's that's how I did it, made it an alien planet. All right, um, well, let's go ahead and uh, actually let me show you the, the moon's orbit. So this is the moon going around the, the planet. And I made the moon take uh, 20 days to go around the, the planet. So all right, so let's go ahead and set this in motion. And you'll see, OK, there's the moon nicely going around the the planet, and there's the planet going around the sun. So the question is, what is the actual path of the moon? Because I don't think that's necessarily obvious. Oh, by the way, notice over here it's tracking. Let me pause it for a second. So it's tracking. This is how many days have gone by. And incidentally, the the decimal point is, uh, in essence, telling us hours. Right? So this is almost 119 days. But um, And then this is in kilometers from the sun. Uh, notice if I reset it that you're actually right now the furthest you can ever be from the sun. So it's saying 250,000 kilometers, and the reason for that is because the sun to the planet, we said, is 150, and then it's another 100 radius of the moon orbiting the planet. So you get the 150 plus another 100, that's the 250. And that's actually the furthest away from the sun you can ever get. I'll let you think about that. But um, in fact, we'll see that in a minute. But OK. Um, you know, let me also show you, I'll show you a couple other buttons right here too. So the reset button resets the days to be zero. There's a later button, I'm not showing you how to build this quite yet, but we will learn it in class, is if I want to go to the closest position that the moon ever gets to the sun. Now it turns out it happens multiple times. It's going to go to the first one. And it's right there. Uh, notice that moon is really close to the sun. Uh, it's 50,000 kilometers away. So in reality, you would never have a moon that close to the sun. Uh, I would get caught by the sun's gravity and pulled in and burned up. Uh, in fact, that's actually that's why Mercury doesn't have any moons. It's too close to the sun. Any moons it would have had got sucked in. Um, 
So that's the closest point. If you want to the furthest point, it'll actually go to the furthest point other than your starting position. So turns out it's there. And it turns out the, the days here, this is the calculator, or our computer program, GeoGebra, rounding a little bit. It turns out the days is actually 20. Um, but the, the fine-tuning isn't quite enough to hit exactly on 20. But notice it did say 250,000, which is, again, the correct amount. I should point out when we go to the close distance, this number should be 10. Um, which, by the way, if you think about it, it sort of makes sense that it would take 20 days because the revolution of the moon around the planet is 20 days. So you're going from the furthest point here to day, day zero to the furthest point here, which again is, is 20. Um, one thing to notice, and this sometimes confuses students, is if it's a 20-day revolution and here it sort of started directly to the right of the planet, that if we wait 20 days and it makes a full revolution, why isn't it right here? We're going to talk about this in class. Uh, but it has actually gone a little bit farther than that. And the reason why it's gone further is it's not just revolving around the Earth. It's also taking on the angular change of the planet going around the sun. We're going to talk a lot about more about that in class. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and see what we're going to be doing in GeoGebra for our, our project. At least this is the, the practice project. Um, so let me set it in motion again. And can you guys guess what this path is going to look like? Because, you know, I, I don't think it's obvious. A lot of times if you just tell people, what's the path of the moon around the sun? They just think it's a circle. Um, and it turns out, especially when the radii is here this close, it's definitely not a circle. So I have a little button here that says, show the moon path. So I'm going to click it now and see if it's what you expected to see. So, kind of pretty. In fact, I'm going to hide the orbits because they kind of get in the way of the actual path. And you can, let me actually not show the planet anymore. I don't even need to show the sun. It's just the center of this crazy shape. And so there you see the, the moon's going around in some crazyified path. But it's actually just going in a circular orbit around something that's going around a circular orbit. And it ends up looking like this. Now, just for funsies, um, I colored it. So if you would like a uh, A plus on your projects, uh, you can color it, and also you, when you do your actual project, you do not need to uh, make a picture of the sun and the planet and the moon. I just grabbed these off the internet and stuck them to GeoGebra. You can just use single points, and that's fine. But if you want the A+, then I actually do want images in there, um, and you can make the pretty pictures as well. Um, so now one other thing that is required is you do need to make these buttons that reset it and go to the close and go to the far. Um, you obviously need to show the path, and you need to show me the formula that gives you the path. Now, I'm not showing it to you right now. We're going to go over it in class. And there's one other thing I also want you to show, and this is what you'll need in order to get the button that makes the close and the far, is I'm going to come over here and show you this graph. This is a graph of uh, the distance of the moon from the sun as a function of time based on days. And you can see when I run it, this little point represents the position of the moon. And again, you can see it's gotten a 20-day cycle where every 10 days it goes between, oh, the apogee and the perigee, you know, the, the far point and the close point. Anyway, so um, we will build something like this in class. And uh, this will be very similar to the actual project you'll be doing yourself. But it's not exactly going to be a, a moon orbit. But it'll be, it'll be something similar to that. So, But we're going to go over how we build this together uh, in GeoGebra and talk about the, the whys and how you come up with the formula parametrically to do all this. And I'll show you how to make the checkboxes in the boxes. So um, also, if you want to come up with your own variations with your own uh, pretty paths so we can print it out maybe put some pictures up on the wall to beautify our new classroom all right uh that's it and i look forward to doing this with you guys in class